Today we're going to be talking about Unreal Engine 5. If you're like me, you like making really cool imagery on the computer and in your artist journey, you will discover that rendering can be a very time consuming process. Well, today I want to demystify some of the rendering tools in Unreal Engine to help you make more educated decisions when you hit that render button. Now, one of the biggest fallacies about Unreal Engine is that it is real time all of the time. To get really good images, sometimes you might have to crank the samples up, but it should not take as long as a typical super duper long powerful render engine like Redshift or Octane. So we have this scene here that I'm working with in Unreal Engine and I wanna kick you off by starting your first animation sequence. So to do that, what you're gonna do is go into your content folder, wherever you would like to save your animation, and you're going to navigate to that folder. I will typically make a folder called sequences, and then I'll just go into my tutorial folder and start by right clicking. When I right click, I will go up to animation and add a level sequence. We can call this rendering demo 001. You can name it whatever you want. So from here, what you can do is double click on that and then a sequencer tab will pop up. I typically like working in 24 frames per second. You could do any of these or your custom frame rate, whatever you choose. 23.976 is my preferred. And then what I will do is I will find a camera in my scene and drop it in. Now, I could just click and drag this in, but if you do not have a camera, what you can do is slide up to the three little dots, lines, things, whatever they are, click on that, scroll down to create camera here, and use the Cine Camera Actor. So once that's in, we have a camera, we can start looking through it by clicking on perspective and go to our desired camera. Obviously, I have a lot of cameras in my scene, but let's just go to this main one. So with this camera selected, I wanna change a couple things after I obviously drag it into my sequencer. Once the camera is in the sequencer, I will go and make things a little bit more cinematic. Right now it is currently an 11 millimeter camera and typically something like a 35 would just look way better. Obviously I have Master Chief standing right there. This is part of another project, but we'll ignore that for now. We can change our focus settings by clicking on this button and then we could make a keyframe by clicking on transform of our camera cine actor in the sequencer. Add a keyframe by clicking on this little button, the little plus sign right here. Then scroll to the end of the timeline and we'll just move the camera a little bit. Hold right click, W forward and just move add one more keyframe there we can see we'll have a simple camera push in now i already did a more detailed camera move so i'm going to actually jump over to that sequence now and you can see what i have cooking so we're in this new sequence that i have that's a little bit more polished we're not going to be talking about how to create and animate a full level sequence inside this tutorial it's mainly on the rendering but i wanted to get you started just in case you didn't know how to add a camera and get started for what you would need to render so let's just say hypothetically you just finished animating your sequence you have some camera moves you have some characters you have some niagara stuff moving in your scene and it might look something like this so I will click on the little lock viewport camera cut so I can view the camera that this sequence is playing from. And then I can hit the play button and see what we're working with. It's just a simple camera push forward on the helmet with some dust in the background. And I think this looks pretty cool working on a little personal project right now. So how are we gonna render this? Well, first thing is you have to make sure you, that you have the correct plugins enabled in Unreal Engine 5. So you're gonna go to the top right-hand corner and you're gonna go to plugins and this window will pop up. This window is all of your plugins. We'll type in movie, render, 
and we want to make sure that we have movie render queue if you have to render crypto mats you'll want to enable this but we'll talk about that in another video you can close that down once you enable the movie render queue plugin you'll have to restart your engine so do that mine's already enabled so i can just close that now to get to your movie render queue settings you go up to window cinematics and movie render queue and this is where you'll be able to drop in your level sequences for your rendered animations so from here we can click on the little render button and then we'll search for our desired level sequence i know i'm going to be rendering rendering in ue5 tut so i will just click on that and i have some base settings already plugged in here however i am going to show you what it would look like if you open it up for the very first time so when you click on the default render settings for the movie render queue this is what it will look like it will have a jpeg and a deferred rendering and then your output so let's analyze this just a little bit so in your output settings what you will see is your output directory this is where you will be able to save your files then you will have your output resolution 1920 by 1080 is generally what you might do but if you are fancy and have the power go for 4k but we'll talk about that soon next if you need to you can go to your frames and set a custom playback range and set your in and out points in case you have to render out a different frame range for your sequence. Now, most of the time you're gonna be changing the output directory and your output resolution. I really don't play with a lot of these other settings. So output is very useful and this is where you will make your final adjustments for where this is gonna be saved. And then from there, you can click accept. And if you just need the base settings, you could hit render and the JPEG sequence would look just like this. Now, when I view this, I'm actually very impressed with what Unreal Engine can do. And one of the biggest pieces of advice I can give when it comes to rendering in Unreal Engine is if you are using real-time tools such as Lumen or even ray tracing in your viewport, what you see is what you get. And what you see is what you get is a really nice way to think about it when you're running in the engine. It really forces you to think about your lighting in your scene and how you're composing your shots rather than trying to force some magical render settings because really there are none in Unreal Engine. Now, there are a couple things you can do, but we're not going to talk about those features in this tutorial. We're just going to be focusing on really good looking viewport renders and how you can get the most out of them. I'm going to go up to render and click on the desired sequence I want to render. And we have our unsaved settings, basically what we've already done. Now, the first thing I will always do when it comes to rendering an Unreal Engine is set my image export type. That is going to be EXRs. So what I can do is I can delete the JPEG sequence and then go to settings and scroll down to EXR sequence. Now, in the compression settings, this is the default. However, for a much smaller file size, you can use the dwab and it will still give you plenty of information to work with and the reason why we want to do exrs is that they are 16-bit so there's going to be more color information so if you're going to be doing any color grading or fancy filters in post you will have more data to work with in your image so let's set this to dwab and we can leave that as is. We'll also make sure we keep on multi-layer. Not gonna be talking about that in this video, but just keep that on in general. After that, what you're gonna wanna do is add a couple other settings. First, I always add the game overrides. This will just make sure that we're getting the most cinematic stuff. Got this tip from Brandon Clements, also known as Glass Hand Studios on the YouTubes. Highly recommend checking him out uh so he says add game override so we're gonna do that next we're gonna add anti-aliasing so anti-aliasing is gonna give you the most quality in your renders however it will take the most amount of time when you add more samples so let's take a look at it go up to settings and add anti-aliasing to put this in the most simple terms, your spatial sample count is how many samples are we trying to make a single still image look good. So the more samples that you have in your spatial sample count, the better it will make slow objects and still objects in your scene. 
Generally speaking, I'll keep this somewhere between 4 and 16. You don't really need to go much higher than that. Next is your temporal spatial count, and this is extremely powerful when it comes to fast moving objects in your scene. This might include characters, or a car, or spells, or grass, or something like that. Truly, the temporal spatial count will add the most quality to your render, so this is where you can get a little bit more aggressive. However, be aware that it will increase your render time dramatically. So my biggest recommendation is start off between 4 and 16, but if you have a really advanced scene and you want to get some really good looking renders, you might want to bump it up to 32 or 64. Anything past that kind of gets hairy and just takes forever, and at that point, you could just go render an Octane or Redshift, but we're not going to talk about that for this video. So I'll set my temporal spatial count to 4 for now, but we might want to add more later. The last thing you'll need to know inside your anti-aliasing settings is you will want to override. Basically, Unreal Engine will use its own temporal anti-aliasing method until the product of your spatial count and your temporal count are greater than 8. Now, what does that mean? It's basically saying, hey, multiply your spatial count, so 4, by your temporal count by 4, 16, 4 times 4 is 16, and that means we're going to have 16 samples for our render. If it's going to be less than 8, then you won't need to override, but just use at least 4 and 4 in both most of the time. So once your anti-aliasing settings are done, we can move on to the next render setting. Go up to your settings and we're going to add in a color output. Now, if you add a color output and you're not doing any other fancy color grading other than using some basic curves and hue and saturation, this is going to be fine. You could also work in an ACES workflow, but for the sake of this video, you're just going to click on disable the tone curve. Now, if you do want to render in something like ACES or a desired color space, then this is where you can add your OCIO configuration. Not going to talk about how to set this up in this video, but basically what you would need to do is enable your OCIO, choose your OCIO object, and then set your desired color spaces. Generally speaking, Unreal will render in a linear sRGB, and then uh, you might want to render in ACES or S-Log or whatever co desired color space. For this video, I'm just going to say ACES CG. Not going to talk about that for you. If you're just starting out and you're not doing any of the OCIO work, I highly recommend just making sure you disable the tone curve. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to go ahead and save these settings. What we have here is actually a really good base to start getting some really high quality renders in Unreal. So I'm going to save that by going up to load and save preset in the top right hand corner of the render settings window. And then we can just save a preset. We can call this tutorial render settings 001. Save. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to render this out and show you what it looks like. So once I kicked off the render button, you'll see a render preview happen on your screen. Now, if you look in the lower right hand corner of your render view, you can see your sample count adding up. It's still going very fast, but because we added those anti-aliasing settings, that is where we're going to add a lot more time to this render. So this is going to take about five to six minutes, and this is what it looks like. Now let's compare this back to the JPEG render, but overall I generally will do this base settings of four spatial counts, four temporal counts as my starting place for something in Unreal. Glasses on because this video is taking a little bit longer than I thought, but now I want to showcase one final thing and that is the console variables in Unreal Engine 5. Now, if you want to push it just a little bit more, you can add console variables. To do that, you're going to click on your settings for your render settings and click on console variables. 
What you'll see here is uh, three settings. We're gonna mainly focus on the top row. We can add a console variable with this little button right here. And it's basically like little lines of code that are very simple to help bring your renders to the next level. Now, the thing about Unreal Engine is that when you're operating in the viewport in the engine, you're making art, you typically don't want to turn on a lot of these settings because it will dramatically slow down your process because it'll just start chugging so this is where you can really push things so that when it's rendering you can get that little bit of extra quality without sacrificing your workflow speed so the first and most important one that will improve the quality of your renders is screen percentage so that console variable is r.screenPercentage. Now, this value is best done between 100% and 200%. I typically keep mine around 150 to 200, but you have to keep in mind that this is increasing the size of your render buffer. Basically, you're doubling or increasing the size of your render image and then the final render process is scaling it back down to your desired size. So if you're gonna render a 1920 by 1080 and your screen percentage is set to 200%, it's gonna render a 3840 by 2160 image and then scale it down. The reason why you would do this is you get so much more detail because it's taking everything and blowing it up and then shrinking it back down. A lot of the little micro jitters of noise ends up getting crunched down as well. So this is gonna be the most valuable console variable that you could add. So let's just set that to 200%. Now, keep in mind, if you are doing 4K rendering, this will dramatically slow down your render. And we're not gonna go into highly advanced render techniques today, but if you are doing a 4K render, you might wanna keep this one around 125%. After your screen percentage console variable, what I like to add is R dot depth of field quality. And I set that to four. So I'll keep all of these in the description of this YouTube video, but generally speaking, you wanna just copy them in and then add the value into the column on the right. You do not want the number in the console variable text command, otherwise it won't work. So I'll add my depth of field quality console variable and then I'll add a motion blur quality and I will copy and paste that and set that to four. I will add another console variable and I will set the shadow quality to be just a touch higher. That will be set to five. And from there, that is all the console variables that I'm gonna add. Now, after I add all those console variables, I can hit the render button and this is gonna give me the best quality. But before I do that, I'm gonna set this to 3840 by 2160. And then I'm gonna set my anti-aliasing settings to a spatial count of one and then a temporal sample count of 16. And the reason why I'm bringing my samples down a little bit is I'm rendering such a high res image for this i don't want this to be rendering for weeks on end if you're really going to let something render for more than a couple seconds per frame you might as well switch it to path tracing which is a whole separate beast right now we're really trying to take advantage of the real time quote unquote tools that live in unreal so with my console variables added my game overrides my color output to ace the cg my anti-aliasing setup Let's double check, nothing else I need to add. We can hit the render button and a final super high quality render would look like this. So once you finish rendering in Unreal Engine, you'll have to do some post-processing to your render from Unreal. Now you could do that in Adobe Premiere, After Effects, or DaVinci Resolve. Because I'm trying to get more of a cinematic color grade look, I do recommend using DaVinci Resolve. Plus you get to take advantage of some of the fun ACES workflow things. Not gonna talk about that today, but stay tuned for more on that. So let's take a look at this first render and see how the JPEG render looks. 
Control F on my keyboard will full screen this render and we can play it back. Looks pretty good. Looks exactly how it looked in Unreal Engine and I am very happy with this. Again, what you see is what you get and Unreal excels at that. So I wouldn't be unhappy with something like this, but there's ways in which you obviously can tweak it to make it better. So let's jump to the next clip. I'll leave the render settings up in the screen here, but this is a different version. This time we are rendering EXRs and I rendered in the ACES workspace, only doing a color transformation to this clip, but I'd say this looks better. You're getting a little bit more dynamic range with the scene and a little bit more detail with the object. There's slightly less noise. My biggest gripe with it is the grass in the background right here. You can see that there's some weird depth of field effects happening that I don't like. Now if we jump to the next render, you can see that this grass cleaned up in the corner very, very nicely. This is where we added a ton of samples. This time we did 32 samples in Unreal Engine, and also we used the console variables to help improve the depth of field quality. So if we play this back, I'd say that this looks very, very nice. Perhaps one of the best, if not the best thus far. Now in the final clip I have here, this is a 4K render using the screen percentage at 200% in Unreal Engine and Control F. This is, in my opinion, the best render that we had in this Unreal Engine session. And if we play it back, there's a lot more detail. There's a lot less noise because everything was scaled up then crunched down. Using that screen percentage with a 4K render gives us really high quality renders. And this is generally gonna be my starting point. Now, I will mention, I have a graphics card, or two of them, uh, that is very powerful. I have two 3090s. So for the technology that I have available to me, I'm able to get this extra 3%. But let's be 100% honest. Our eyes are not that big. Our phones are not that big. Most of the time, people are gonna be watching this on their phone or a monitor that is 1920 by 1080 or 2560 by 1440. Not many people have a 4K monitor. Sure, it'd be nice, but let's rewind just a little bit. This is the render settings using just the base settings with four samples and the temporal count and spatial count, and this still looks super good. So my point behind showcasing all of these four renders is that they all look very, very similar. The best one being this one here is that it's 4K, it's screen percentage, 200%. You can get some really amazing quality. You can get that extra little three or four percent. However, the 90 percent, which is just a base four by four spatial and temporal count, looks very good. Last thing I will mention is I did one extra render, and this time I rendered the scene in Lumen. All the other scenes are rendered using ray tracing, and you're gonna get a very different look just because obviously the scene is much smaller. We're getting a lot of small micro detail, and I found that Lumen doesn't really excel with a lot of that micro detail stuff. Uh, so if we play this back, we can see that the helmet reflection is less defined. We don't have the main character. I don't have to fuss with the Lumen settings more, but Lumen still looks very good, and this was actually the fastest render. But one big thing I would like to say when it comes to Lumen or ray tracing is in Unreal Engine, if it looks good, it looks good, and just render it out. You're the judge of that. Be honest with yourself. Most of the time, the best render settings in Unreal Engine come from your lighting, your composition, and your storytelling. But I'll leave it there. I hope you learned something about rendering in Unreal. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. If you'd like to join the party and learn more about Unreal, I make content like this sometimes, most of the time. Subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can find said content, or let me know that you enjoyed this video by hitting that like button. In fact, take a baseball bat and beat the, beat it, just hurt it, abuse it. But I'll leave it there. Last thing, eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight and you'll make some Goodbye, my friends. Bye. You can add your mask, you can add some curves, whatever you want. This is where you do your final bits and pieces to 
this is where you would do your final look so then you can make something post it on post it on uh. <laughs> <laughs>